Okay, thanks, Jenny. So hello, museum families, and welcome to RBCM at Home Kids, a play date through screens across British Columbia and the world. Um, the previous sessions are rec recorded and you can find them on our Royal BC Museum YouTube page. And I know we have a lot of new um, visitors, not lots of new friends today. So welcome, and we're really happy that you're here. Just a reminder, this is a webinar, so we can see your comments, uh, but we can't see you. Um, but you can see us and you can um, make comments whenever you want throughout the session, whether you're on Facebook Live or you're on Zoom. So my name is Chris O'Connor and I'm a learning program developer here at the Royal BC Museum. The museum and my home is on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations here in Victoria on Vancouver Island. Um, I'm an uninvited guest on this territory. I'm grateful to live, learn and raise a family on this land. And I know a lot of people visiting right now are not from uh, or not in Victoria right now. So you could think about which what traditional territories are you on uh, that you are living on right now? What indigenous uh, nations are are um, lands are you are you on right now? So last last month we we started a new tradition here at RBCM at Home Kids by having the first week of the month be a dedicated museum field trip. Since we can't have classes come in person this year, we'll go exploring digitally instead. Most, <clears throat> most other weeks I have a guest on and we do activities, but this is more of a like exploring the museum um, session. Um, so last, last time we went up to the train station in Old Town, if you've been to the museum before, and today we're gonna go to another one of my favorite areas of the museum. But I wanted to say when I was a kid, I, lived, I was living in, in Philadelphia, a long way away in the United States. And my favorite museum was the Franklin Institute, which is a science museum. And in particular, my favorite part of them uh, was the large, there was a large heart that you could walk up into and travel through. And at the end, there was even a slide that you slid down. It was great. And you also, the sound of the heart beating and you would go th through these narrow tunnels and it was amazing. It was exactly what I wanted as a kid. Um, and ever since, I particularly love museums that make me feel like I'm in the environment. And the, and the place we're going to go today, the Natural History Gallery here at the Royal BC Museum, is just like that, where there are bears and beetles and birds and trees, and also one animal that I particularly love. And I'm going to show you a little bit of it right now. And I want you to guess, here, I'll, I'm gonna take away, that's great. I'm gonna, I want you to try to guess what animal is it that I'm starting to show? Maybe in the chat, oh, someone says a wolf. That's a good, ah, yeah, you're, <laughs> a woolly mammoth, a beaver. Those are all really good suggestions. I did see, oh, here, I'll give a little bit more. Yeah, someone said a sea otter <laughs> that's swimming past the screen. That's right, an otter. So someone did say a sea otter. Now, how do you know that this is a sea otter and not a river otter as it's swimming past? Because there are two kinds of otters, or at least two kinds of otters, river otters and sea otters. And this is a sea otter. And the way that we know that it's a sea otter, and I'm just going to put my camera down a little bit. So the, the way that we know this is a sea otter is because it's on its back. And sea otters love to be on their back. They swim on their back, they chill out on their back. They love being on their back. They even hold their babies on their back. The babies are on their belly, but they're on their back. So they're, most of their life they're on their back because that just feels good for them. But they also could do a lot of things too. So these, are some other things. Does anyone know what this is? Can anyone guess what this kind of animal is? Ah, uh, yeah, right. I see some sea urchins. So this is a sea urchin. A sea urchin, um, it has spines. So this is one with spines. And then this is one without spines that the spines just fell off. But in the wild, they would have spines and sea otters love sea urchins. 
and they hold them in their little cute little arms. They hold the sea urchin, but sea urchins are pretty hard to get into. They're, they're like, it's, it's hard to get into the meat of the sea urchin. So what they do is they get a little rock, they hold the sea urchin and they hit the rock, they hit the rock against the sea urchin to break it open. And sometimes sea urchins, sea otters love their rock so much that they keep it in a little pocket under their arm. And they'll, keep, they'll take out their favorite rock that once they get their sea urchin, they'll hit it, open it up and be able to eat, which I think is really pretty cool um, that they love their, they have one rock that they love. Um, I could relate. So, and these are really important because if there's not sea otters in the ocean around here, then there would be too many sea urchins. So it's really, it's really good that both are here because there's sea urchins for, to live and, and it's great to have sea urchins, but it's also great to have sea otters and they balance each other out, which is really important. So we're gonna go explore the, the natural history gallery of the Royal BC Museum. And I'm, going, I'm getting my camera up right now and I'm putting on, in my ear pods. And because I'm going to be in the gallery, I'm going to put on my mask too. And just so you see, this is what I'm going to be holding. This, this is a gimbal, and this helps the, the um, camera stay um, stable. So actually, I press this button here, and something magical happens. It's almost like a robot. <laughs> and then I can see myself there. So I'm going to turn off my camera. And Jenny, if you could spot. Oh, so Jenny, can you see me? Yes, we can see you and we can hear you. Oh, great. That's perfect. That's just how I wanted it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, actually, I don't think, I, well, let me bring my, let me bring my keys just in case I get stranded somewhere. Um, so I'm going to come back just to get my keys. So where I am right now is the Learning Center of the Royal BC Museum. It's a new space that we have here at the museum. And I'm going to be walking. So usually, actually, when you would come, there would be these hooks against the wall. So maybe you would be putting your jackets on, um, put, putting your jackets down in the hallway. Um, and I'm gonna go down the, the steps right now. Um, so I'm gonna turn the camera around just so you can see where I am. So now I'm in the lobby. So imagine your class is all gathered here and your teacher maybe is starting to say, some of the rules of what it, or the ways to behave in the museum, the different things that we're gonna see. This is the security desk right here, one of our security guards taking good care of the museum. And here's the lobby of the Royal BC Museum. And actually today we're closed. So there's no one in the museum except for a few of us, but your class, your, Teacher would probably get tickets here at the front of the museum. And then we're gonna go actually up the escalator. So we're gonna walk up the escalator. And actually a, a cool thing about the escalator, as soon as you stand on it, it starts to go a little faster. These are new smart escalators. So last, Last week when we were here, we, we, whoa, there's new things happening on the floor. I think this is because of our orcas exhibition. So you're actually starting to see some of what's happening with our orcas exhibition. And I'm gonna see if I can just,
go past here. So we have some workers working on the museum while the museum is closed. So we're now in the natural history gallery. And the place that I wanna take you to is past the woolly mammoth here, but maybe another month we'll come back to the woolly mammoth. And we're gonna go around the hallway here. And remember I said there were beetles. So in this hallway, there's a big beetle. That's a big model of a beetle. We also, there's other animals. Oh yeah, Jazzy, the last time you were here, you felt the ice. Yeah, the, there's the ice beside the woolly mammoth that is actual ice, real ice. And then, so we're in the, we're in the, um, the forest here. And actually, Jenny, I just realized I don't have my light. Um, so I don't know if, if you're able to just quickly bring that up to the sea otter cave. Yes, I'll be there so, shortly. Yeah. Great. So we're, this is in the forest. And actually, I just noticed today, just, just off to the center, I think we put some light there to make it look like it's a sunrise or sunset. Um, and I was saying that there is lots of different animals here. And one animal that sometimes people forget to see or they miss is actually around the corner here. There's a cougar that's hanging out uh, right around the corner. And there's that new light that looks like, I think it looks like a sunset, like the sun is setting. All right, so when we go, when I go from the forest to the, um, to the ocean, when I'm walking in the forest in real life, not at the museum, I love that feeling of going from the forest into the ocean, the way the sound changes, the way that the feel of the air coming off the ocean. So this is where we are right now. We're in the, we're in the ocean area. So we went from the forest to the ocean. And actually this is, a, this is a part of the museum that is supposed to be, this area right here is Long Beach by Tofino or in Tofino. So we try to create these dioramas, they're called dioramas. So parts of the museum that look like environments, we try to make them look like actual places in British Columbia. And there is a big sea lion here who's doing a really, good stretch. Actually, try to do that at home too. Like take your, just stretch your, your um, back like that. You can go down on the floor if you want to put your hands on the floor and stretch your arm back, your head back to stretch like that. Thanks, Jenny. So the sea lion and you're also, you're also here. Oh, so the question is um, from AJ, is it real? That's a really good question. So this sea lion is real, or it was real, it was alive. Everything that we have in the museum, it lived a good life and then it died. Um, we don't go out and kill animals, um, but when they do die, sometimes they're donated to the museum. And so this was a real sea lion and now it lives in the museum. So people can, cause usually you wouldn't be able to get this close to a sea lion in real life. So it's pretty fun to be able to get close to, to a sea lion. And you, AJ, you were saying, is it real? We actually do have some things at the museum that are real and actually alive. Oh, and actually this, this is exciting. The crab is trying to get out of the tide pool here. I was <laughs> trying to get closer. The crab is, I've never seen the crab get that far out of the tide pool. So um, very exciting. And then in the tide pool, there's also besides the crab, there is, um, there's a sea anemone there. And these are all live animals, seagrass. Um, there's a chitin down there and barnacles. There is lots of beautiful barnacles and then this sea star too. 
So most of the things in the museum are not real, but then we do have some things in the museum that are real. Yeah, that is sad. And it's uh, AJ, but just saying that it's, it's sad that the sea lion died. And well, I'd like to think that they, they lived a really good life and now they're able to be in the museum and be able to be and be with lots of people and for people to see them and be with them. Um, but it, it does, yeah, I sometimes feel that too, that it's, it's sad. Um, so one of the things that around the corner here, something that might look a little familiar of what we saw before. Yeah, the backgrounds do look so real. It almost feels like you could just go out into the water and swim there or take a kayak. So the birds to the right here are oyster catchers. They look like they have carrots for, for beaks, I sometimes think. Um, but then this, yeah, it's, a, it's actually, it's an otter, but is this a sea otter or is it a river otter? What do you think? It comments from the uh, chat or, um, and why do you think it's a river otter or a sea otter? Yeah, I see a, quite a few comments of that river, a river otter. Remember I was saying that sea otters are on their back, um, but this one is not on its back. It's actually standing up. Um, so this, even though it's by the sea and there's lots of river otters that hang out in the sea, but this is a river otter, not a sea otter. And my favorite part of the museum, and that's why I wanted to bring you here, is there's another way of seeing the river otter and it's around the corner here to this cave. So this is a cave where we can look at the river outer again, but through this perspective, which is kind of cool. It feels like you're inside of a cave. And if you look, oh, wait just a second. See how the water, yeah, you just saw water. That's right, because it actually is water. So water, and you, if you were here, you would smell the water as well. So my question to you is how is it that how is it that we have the water coming how do we have the water coming into this cave any ideas And I had one of the, I have one of the questions is can you walk into it So usually you can't but now actually we're going to we are going to walk into it this is something you can't do if you just come for a regular visit. So this is a special museum field trip thing that we're gonna do. But I did see some answers of a pump. Um, so maybe it's a pump that pumps the water in. Maybe there's pipes that pipe the water in. You notice how the water comes and then it goes away and then it comes and it goes away. So we're going to go explore inside the cave. Very exciting. So we're gonna come over to this area and actually there's another, um, here's another, there's another otter here as well. So we're gonna go through this secret door that most people don't even realize it's a door. And I have a special, I have a special key, so I'm able to get in here. But uh, usually, people wouldn't be able to get into this room. And this is a back room that we have. We store a lot of our, a lot of our things back here, including right here is the extra rock that we use for the dioramas. So if any parts of the dioramas get um, damaged, we have some extra rocks that we made that we can add to the dioramas. But I wanted to show you this room, which will get us into, get us into the, the sea otter cave. 
So you were saying that maybe it's a pump or it's, I'm just gonna take down my mask right now um, just cause I'm in a safe place. So we were saying maybe it's a pump or maybe it's pipes. So look at how the water fills up that little tray. So um, as soon as the water gets heavy in that tray, like it fills up. Yeah, it's like a bucket. That's right. It's like a water bucket, water buckets at a water park. As soon as it gets heavy, usually if it's a water park, it would it would go on you. <laughs> but now it goes down this little track. I'm gonna go inside further. Goes down this track like a seesaw. That's right. And it goes, that's where we were before, um, where the cave ends. So as soon as it's getting heavy, the water comes down and goes out. And then the water, because of, oh, that's a good question. Do we always put new water? We do change the water and we have filters here to make sure the water doesn't get moldy or anything. So, um, and actually I'm just gonna go a little bit further. You'll see there's, there's some rocks here. These you can see, but then also there's certain parts that we don't need to add rocks because you can't see from the outside. And then I'm gonna <laughs> keep going down and you'll notice that there, there's actually a mirror there. And this mirror actually connects with this mirror. And it's kind of like a museum trick because when you're looking into the cave, you see the mirror and the mirror shows the rocks and it makes it look, look like the cave is much bigger than it actually is, which is kind of cool. It's like an optical illusion, like a magic. And you'll see there's a little bit of rock just on the edge here to make it look like you don't even see the tray. You just see the rocks when you're looking in the cave. So I'm gonna go back out and we'll, we'll look at that area again from the, the, where we first saw them, when we first saw it. So that's where we were. Just kind of cool, huh? And if we were here, it's tempting to go into the cave, but actually I'll show you. Um, I don't know if it's on right now, but there's a little laser that is a little laser across. So if someone was going to try to get into the cave, the laser would just indicate that someone was trying to get in and an alarm would go off. So that's how we keep the diorama safe by having just little alarms just to make sure that no one actually goes into the dioramas unless they're with someone like me as a staff. So are there, oh no, it's, it hasn't gone off. It's still, it's still going, but we just went a little bit away from it right now. So um, are there any questions about this sea, the seashore, the cave? the forest. There is a question, Chris, yeah. about um, a little bit more about the water. So once it drops yeah. and goes and splashes, where does it go after? Yeah, that's How a really good question. That is an excellent question. And we're going to, we'll go back to the inside the cave and see how that works. So as soon as here, then we'll see it all go through the whole thing again. So the tray gets too heavy. The tray dips down, the water comes down. It goes as far as it can, but then it's a little bit of a downward slope. So the water comes all the way down to this little pool. And that's where you see there's, there are these filters and things that help make sure that the water stays clean. And then right there, there's that pipe that sucks the water up and then through that pipe and the pipe goes right back into that tray so that there's always water that's flowing through those pipes and the water just keeps cycling around. And we have this, yeah, we have the, the filter just to make sure that it's nice and clean water. 
Lovely. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah. definitely. Um, we Any also other? have um, just a couple of questions about yeah. um, like, are the rocks real or are the trees real? I don't know if you covered that already. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm going to, if you were here, I would say, let's, let's figure that out together. So let's imagine this is your hand and I'm going to ask you to just knock on the rock. So do you hear that little echo? That means that it's not real. So this is, this is fake rock, but it looks really real. And, um, and then in the diorama, there's a point where it becomes a painting and that's not real as well. And then the trees also, I'll do the same thing. So coming over to the trees, same thing, it's, it's hollow inside. So it, it looks like a real tree, but it isn't. Um, and same with this. It re they really look like real trees, but they're not. But one thing we do put real things in is actually the salal, which is a kind of plant. Um, I'm not sure if we're doing it these days, but we used to collect new salal plants all the time so that there's some real things within the museum. So the salal plants were real. Um, so it's a mix of different things. Some things are real, some things are not real. In here, in this, this river, this rock that I'm right here is, is not real. But then inside, there are real rocks. But they look exactly the same, which is our exhibits team here at the museum do a really great job just making things look as real as possible. And then with the sounds around us, it makes it feel it's real also. Yeah, it's, the trees, I think, do a great job of looking real. They made casts out of real trees. So that's yeah. why they look so realistic. Thank you for answering. Yeah, that. they went They went out to, this is a long time ago, but they went out to, I think it was a forest in Souk near here in Victoria. They put up scaffolding around the trees and made casts of them and then brought those back and then made the uh, made the molds out there and then made the casts from from the molds uh, that they got out in nature. So they're as real as possible. Yeah, and we had some other comments of like, is yeah. the deer real or is this real? It's a good combination <laughs> of um, real and not real to try to be very immersive, which is great. Yeah, totally. And um, I see a comment saying, hmm? is the bear real? Mm. And the bear is real. And actually, I'll show you really quickly. This bear is hard to get to because there's um, there's a, a fence that's getting me um, so that I can't get to that bear. But I can show you actually a real a bear that we can get really close to. Just in this room right here. Hold on just a second. So this is a special room that we have with lots of different animals. And here's, does anyone know what kind of bear this is? There's, yeah, <laughs> a grizzly bear. That's right, yeah, I see a lot of grizzly bears. So that's, it is a grizzly bear and we can get really close to it. And if you were here, I would say you could even touch it too. Usually you wouldn't be able to touch a grizzly bear, but this one you can. And we know it's a grizzly bear because of this big hump at the top of the grizzly bear. Black bears do not have that hump. So it's one of the easiest ways to tell that what some, if something's a grizzly bear. And actually, this is a baby grizzly bear, which doesn't quite have the hump yet. Um, but that's a big, yeah, I, I think all too, like it's a it's very cute. So it's that small and then it grows to be this huge. And they, they get this big hump because they do a lot of digging um, for roots and berries and, and, and other things. Um, so they build that muscle. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there's a couple questions about like for the real animals are okay. like, do they, um, do they be put in those positions? So like the sea lion, was it in that position when it died? And that's how you can make it look like that or? Yeah, that, that is a really good question. So I'm, I'm showing right now a wolf that we have. This is our, we, we call this wolf mystic. Um, and 
Mystic uh, also, again, lived a really long life and, um, and died and was donated to the museum. And then it wasn't in this position. So the thing, what it's called is taxidermy, is when you take an animal that has died and you create it in such a way, so you'll have, you have to take out the bones and other things inside of the animal and you clean it up and then you create a, like use wire and different things to make it be in any kind of pose that you would like. So same thing with the bear as well. So the bear was, they when they did the taxidermy, they wanted to have it be like the bear was walking through the forest. So you can you can do it in lots of different ways. Thank you so much, Chris. We, there was a question about um, how the woolly mammoth was created, but I believe we may be visiting the woolly mammoth on a different visit. We um, might, yeah. <laughs> but I'll just put in the chat a, a link to the learning portal that you can learn a little bit about it being created there. Thank you, Jenny. This is another animal that I really, I really like. Um, oh. Does anyone know what kind of animal that is? Oh, it does look like a beaver or a badger. Yeah, those are all really great guesses. So prairie dog, capybara groundhog, wolverine, those are all really great guesses. It's actually, it is a marmot. So this is a Vancouver Island marmot. And there are not many, there are not many left. There's lots of, lots of um, efforts to try to make more, like have the environment in such a way that Vancouver Island marmots can um, have more families and get like grow their population. But they just live on Vancouver Island, and there's not too many of them right now. But they're they're starting to make a comeback. So I love looking at this Vancouver Island marmot and thinking about all the ways in which um, more marmots are are being born all the time. So, any other questions, Jenny? Um, we have a couple of questions about the crab that you showed. I believe there yeah, were some live creatures of where did the crab come from or what type of crab is it? Yeah, I'm not sure if I'd be able to say what type of crab it is, but we have we have a group, um, an organization in town that come and they every month they add new things, they'll take things out. Um, we have our staff here at the museum that feed the animals all the time. Where is that crab? Oh, there, it went all the way across to the other side of the tide pool. So it gave up its uh, thing of wanting to, to get out. So yeah, that's, um, there's, yeah, lots of different, though now the sea star is almost out of the water here too. So every time you look at this tide pool, pool from month to month, it looks very different and more different things are in here all the time. And we have staff that are taking care of the animals and making sure that they have enough food um, and the things that are in here get along as well. Oh, does a crab look angry? <laughs> oh. Yeah, crabs are pretty expressive. <laughs> I wish I could pick it up, but um, we, we have a rule here and I'll show you the sign that we have. So if you have fins or gills, you can play in the pool, but if not, please don't put your hands in the water. It's home to living animals. So I don't have gills or fins. So, so I will not put my hands in the water. We have a, another question. Um, yeah. When you just showed the, bee, um, the, the, marmot, the marmot, is there a difference between a bee? Like what is the difference between a beaver and a marmot? Yeah, that's a great question. And maybe um, I know we're probably getting close to the end. Um, so let's just, the great thing about the museum, so here's a good opportunity. The great thing about the museum is that there's lots of different um, animals here and the animals help us understand natural history. So if we can look at one animal compared to another animal, then it will give us a sense of how they are different. So this, I didn't show you this before, 
So this is a beaver. So just look at that and get a sense like, what, what do you notice about this beaver? Look at its feet. Look at its tail. Observe that there, its uh, claws are a little, yeah, flat feet, webbed feet. Its claws are a little broken, but it has claws. And just look at the way it looks like in the front. So this is a beaver and it's kind of a little bit fat, like wide. And then we'll go around the corner. And this is the marmot. So from what you remember about looking at the beaver, what's different? Using your observation skills. What's different from what we saw with the beaver? Yeah, the tail is different. Look, the tail with the beaver was flat. This beaver has a, bush, a bushy round tail. Someone said the feet, that's right. So there's, there's not the webbed feet. There's the, the claws, but not the webbed feet. It is smaller, yeah. Like it's not as wide, but it's also smaller in size too. And the hands, that's right, yeah. So these hands, what do you notice about these hands? They're, here, I'll turn on the light as well, just so you can see. These hands are longer, the claws are longer, the sharper claws, that's right. Beavers like to live in, but you see that the teeth are kind of a little similar, just not as, as big of teeth as beavers. The pokey ears, that's right, the ears are different too. You all are making such good observations. <laughs> You're totally getting it. So there's lots of things that are similar. It's almost like it. And a lot of times when they see, when people see this, they think it's a beaver. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cute too. I think mar marmots are incredibly cute. Um, and they are related. So they're both, they're both related, um, but they're just, um, they're just different. And thinner eyes too, that's right. Yeah, really good observations. Looking at the eyes, the claw, the, the tail, the teeth. Those are ways at a museum, you could look at how things are different. And someone said, can you show a bird? And just above the marmot kind of <laughs> looks like this bird is, is looking at the marmot um, is this great gray owl. And then even owls, there's different kinds of owls. So this is a Northern hawk owl. Yeah, the eyes are yellow. The interesting, the last thing I'll say is that the interesting thing about eyes with taxidermy, with animals that are, that die, come to the museum and get sort of constructed to be in a shape is that they can save the, the skin and the feathers, but they can't really save the eyes. The eyes just um, disintegrate, they decay. So all the eyes are, um, my light just went out. Um, all the eyes are just kind of like marbles. It's the only way to do eyes is to have something that's just like marbles to, to show um, that there are eyes there, but they're not, they're not the real eyes. So I'm just gonna turn my camera around and maybe I'll get in a spot that a little bit more light. So thank you so much everyone for joining. I, I love these museum field trips, being able to go come to the museum and come to the gallery with, in a way that um, we're used to doing it with classes here at the museum. Um, and uh, we're really glad that you can join us at least virtually or digitally um, today. And then next month we'll do another one. So in the first week of April, we'll do another one to another part, I'm thinking maybe behind the scenes of the museum next time. But if you have any suggestions, put it in the chat or the comments of where you would like to go next. Um, and then next week and every week we do this, um, next week we'll be with a special guest and the weeks after we'll be with special guests. It's just the first week of every month. So thank you so much for joining. Um, and oh, I see a thumbs up for behind the scenes. So I'll, I will take that and we'll do a behind the scenes one. Uh, next week. We'll go out into the collection tower and see um, crazy animals or things that uh, that are behind the scenes. So um, 
thank you so much for joining and we look forward to seeing you next time. All right, bye everyone.